Hi, this is Sarah Dean. In this video, I'm going to really focus on epithelial tissues. So in the last video, I introduced four tissue types and talked specifically about linings and coverings of the body, which are uh, a combination of, epith of epithelial tissue and connective tissue. So in this video, we're doing a deep dive into epithelial tissue. So first, I want to talk about the uh, some, some important properties of epithelial tissues. So epithelial tissues, the cells that make up epithelial tissues are polar. That just means the two ends are different. So a lot of times when students hear the word polar, they're thinking, you know, like water molecules are polar because they have a different electromagnetic charge on each end of the water molecule. Partial positive on one end, a partial negative on the other. Well, polar actually just means the two ends are different. It doesn't have to have to do with electromagnetism. So when I say that the cells that make up epithelial tissue are polar, I'm not saying that they're charged. I'm not saying that they have a negative side and a positive side. What I'm saying is that the two ends are different. And uh, these cells can be polar in different ways. For example, the two ends might look different. The apical side, or the top side of the cells, in some epithelial tissues are wavy because they have cilia or microvilli. And, uh, and while the, the basal side, the bottom side that's attached to the connective tissue, is flat for that connection. So those two ends would look different, a wavy end and a flat end. That is an example of the cell being polar or having two different properties on the different ends. Another way an epithelial cell could be polar is uh, one side could be an entrance for materials and the other side an exit. So the two ends have different functions. You know, materials move one way through the cell, in on one side and out the other. So one end's an entrance, the other end's an exit. You know, this is especially important for cells that um, that where diffusion is happening perhaps, or secretions. So if the two ends have different functions, that's another example of these epithelial cells being polar or different on two sides. Another important property of epithelial cells is that they are avascular. Oops, avascular. <laughs> that means that there's no blood vessels running to them. So they, have, they do have to be fed, you know, they have to breathe oxygen and be fed nutrients. Um, so they have to, the, the tissues that underlie them have to somehow allow those materials to diffuse to them. So you have to have, there has to be enough body fluid beneath them that they can get the materials that they need to survive. So avascular, uh, but they are innervated. which means that there's nervous tissue running to epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue can sense what's around it and send those sensations to the brain. So the brain can read how the epithelial tissue is doing because it's communicating with the epithelial tissue with uh, nervous tissue, with nerves, right? Um, all right, then we uh, can say that, oh, lateral junctions are, it has some, some important styles of lateral junctions. So one kind of lateral junction that you find in epithelial tissues are tight junctions. Because these cells are linings and coverings of the body. So that's what epithelial tissue is, is the coverings. And a covering is it's meant to separate two sides, you know, separate the inside from the outside, you know, if you think about your skin. So these epithelial cells have to be tightly, tightly held together. That's what the tight junctions are for. They have to be held together so tightly that viruses can't invade between the cells or nutrients can't leak out, you know, water doesn't leak out from the cells. It has to be a solid barrier that prevents invasion or escape of materials. So that's what those tight junctions are for. It holds the cells so tightly together that nothing can pass between them. Uh, it also has, these cells also have desmosomes that connect them because these linings and coverings, they have to be flexible and they have to be with, able to withstand like tugging and tearing and movement, right? Like think about the skin on your hands. So the desmosomes are, uh, are really strong anchors. They anchor the cells together. They're not as, they don't hold the cells together as tightly, but they allow for that, that, that pressure, or that force of, of tearing, of movement. 
uh, without so that the cells don't tear apart. Let's see, we also have uh, supported by connective tissue. And uh, quickly regenerate it. So supported by connective tissue, that's just, the epithelial tissues are very thin. So they're not very durable. They need a more durable support system in order to not fall apart. So that's the supported by connective tissue, and they also regenerate quickly. That's because, well, they have, so different cells, different cell types in your body have different capacities for regeneration. Some regenerate slowly, some regenerate quickly. Epithelial tissues, being coverings, uh, usually experience a lot of abrasion or environmental assaults <laughs> from like caustic chemicals and things like that. So, you know, you can think about your skin is constantly getting nicked and scratched. Cells are sloughing off all the time, but it doesn't matter because they regenerate quickly. Uh, the same thing with, for example, your gastrointestinal tract or your lungs. You know, you're breathing in these uh, pollutants all the time that probably are, you know, they have the potential to kill your cells off once exposed, but they're always regenerating. And gastrointestinal tract, there's acids, there's digestive enzymes, there's all kinds of whatever is in your food, lots of bacteria. But again, they can regenerate quickly, so it's okay. Right, and I'll just tie uh, right up here. These are epithelial. We're talking about epithelium. So those are some important qualities of epithelial tissues. So epithelial tissues are named for the cell shapes and the cell arrangements that make up those tissues. So for example, here we'll make a list of the different shapes that the cells, can, the epithelial cells can take on. And then we'll make another list for the arrangements. that those cells can take. So there's three different shapes. There's uh, squamous. Squamous just means flat. And often, you know, these cells are so flat that the nucleus kind of bumps up out of them. <laughs> the nucleus is thicker than the rest of the cell. So they're kind of like this flat pancake. Then you have cuboidal. That's easy to remember, right? Because it's just a cube. They're as tall as they are wide as they are long. There's the nucleus. And columnar. That's easy too, because they just look like a column. They're taller than they are wide. All right, so those are the three shapes. And then we have three main, you know, well, actually there's, there's two arrangements that all of these shapes can take. And then there's one arrangement that's special for columnar. So let's, but I'll, we'll just look at all three. So simple, simple is simple. It's just a simple layer, a single layer of cells. So we'll do it with a squamous. So this is a simple cell layer, single layer. Oops, not an M, <laughs> a single cell layer. And uh, then you have stratified. Stratified is more than one layer. So that's pretty simple to remember, right? You have a, so this, we can start with a simple layer, but if we wanted to stratify it, we'd simply add some cells stacked on top. Anything more than one layer is a stratified layer. So I already have a stratified layer here, but usually these stratified layers have more. than that, especially if we're talking about squamous cells. These squamous cells can really get stacked up. All right, so more than one cell layer. All right, and now pseudostratified. Pseudostratified cells or pseudostratified layers look like multiple layers, but they're actually only one layer. So pseudo means fake, like pseudoscience is fake science. 
Pseudostratified means fake stratified. It's actually a simple layer, but it just looks like a uh, it looks like a stratified layer. So we only see this with columnar cells, so you only have pseudostratified columnar. And I'll show you what I mean. So this line here, that's the connective tissue layer that the cells are attached to. And all the cells in this layer, in, in this uh, epithelial tissue, in the pseudostratified epithelial tissue, they're all attached to that basement membrane. So they're all a single layer in that way. But they're all different heights, and so it looks like there's more than one layer. But it's not true. There's actually only one. Oops, that. Uh, we'll just pull that out a little bit. All right. So you kind of see what I mean, right? And not only that, but the nuclei are kind of all over the place, and that accentuates this stratified look. So the nuclei can, some of them are up, some of them are down. So when you're looking at this under a microscope, you know, un, when you're looking in a microscope, the nuclei are very apparent, and the rest of the cells are kind of hard to see, so the, the, your eyes are really drawn to um, the nuclei. And usually when you're looking at a simple layer, all the nuclei are in this tidy little row. But in pseudostratified, the nuclei are all over the place, and that's because the cells are all these different sizes. So that's why they look stratified, but they're not really. So pseudostratified. Now, epithelial tissues, to name them, you just name the different combinations of shapes and arrangements, cell shapes and cell arrangements found inside that tissue. So you could have simple squamous, you could have stratified squamous, you could have simple, simple cuboidal or stratified cuboidal. Um, so we really just name them by looking at the shape of the cells, looking at how they're arranged, and then combining the two terms. But not all shape arrangement combinations are really found in the body, at least not in very high abundance. So I'm going to cover the most common types of epithelium found in the body and, uh, and where you find them. And the nice thing is that if you understand the you know, form equals function, or form relates to function in biology. So if you understand the point of having a certain shape and arrangement, you can intuit where you would find that tissue type. So for example, a really great example is simple squamous, which we drew above, but I'll draw it again. So simple squamous. So this is the thinnest epithelial tissue that you can have. It's the thinnest cell type and is only one layer thick. So it's very fragile. It's very common in the body though. So why would you have such a fragile covering? Well, you're gonna find this in places where diffusion and filtration are important because you need a really thin membrane for materials to pass through. So if you're thinking about what this shape, this form, of this tissue might be for, you could figure out where you'd find it. So you can say, okay, well this is very thin, very fragile. Fragile isn't going to be where, you know, on your skin, right, because that needs to be durable. So where would a thin membrane be useful? Well, where you need to, where, where materials need to diffuse across or be filtered across. So this is for diffusion and filtration. So some examples of where you'd find that are going to be like the lungs. So, you know, the air comes through all these tubes in your lungs and to, you know, and at the end of those tubes, there's the alveoli, where gas exchange between your lungs and your blood actually occurs. So in the alveoli, they are covered with a simple squamous epithelium, where oxygen and carbon dioxide can just diffuse directly across these cells because they're so thin. So. Um, lungs. You also find them in the glomeruli in the kidneys where the blood is filtered. So the site where the blood is filtered, that's where you're going to find this kind of membrane. So glomeruli in the kidneys. Uh, capillaries. Capillaries are where um, nutrients and oxygen from the blood are being uh, passed to the tissues of the body to feed the tissues. 
So in that case, materials need to move out of the blood into the tissues. Also, the blood picks up waste products from the tissues at that point. So there's that exchange happening. So you're going to find them in capillary beds. Okay. Now you also can get stratified squamous, which I also drew above, but I'll draw it again. And most of the places, this is going to be your skin. Your skin is stratified squamous. And there's, I can't even draw how many layers of this there are. Your skin has many, many, many layers of squamous cells. This is where you get a lot of abrasion. So the cells are being scraped off. I can scratch my arm and not bleed because there's so many squamous cells that can just leave and there's still more underneath. So uh, this is a, where you get a lot of abrasion. You need cells to spare, right? This is gonna be like the skin. All right, so then we have uh, another very common type is um, cuboidal. So you don't get pseudostratified squamous. So that's what I'm saying is you don't find every combination of shape and, uh, and cell arrangement in the body. So there's no, there's no pseudostratified squamous. Now you can have simple cuboidal. So simple cuboidal. So simple, so these, you could finish each of these with the word epithelium. So simple squamous epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium, simple cuboidal epithelium. So cube shaped cells, um, they have more space for equipment. This, the squamous cells are so flat, there's not much space for, to keep anything inside of them. They're just kind of a nucleus and a couple other things, but it's like a tiny house, like you can't put much in there. The cubed cells, the cuboidal cells, they're big enough to hold um, a factory. <laughs> so these can, the cuboidal cells can manufacture substances. So you're going to find these in places where substances need to be secreted. So secretion is one of their jobs. So they can manufacture substances and secrete those substances. So for example, glands. Glands that need to make maybe like digestive enzymes or something like that. So they manufacture these enzymes and then they secrete them. Okay. Um, they, the simple cuboidal cells also have space for absorption. And that's different from diffusion or filtration because when you're talking about diffusion or filtration, the material is not going into the squamous cells for very long. It's passing completely through them. But when you're talking about absorption, the cell is actually taking something into itself. So there's something on the outside of the cell that it actively absorbs and keeps inside it. Maybe it modifies it before passing it through to the other side, perhaps. So you're going to find these kinds of cells, like I said, in, um, in glands, where materials need to be manufactured and secreted. Um, and you also find them in like the nephron tubules in the kidneys. common there too. So there's a place in the kidneys where the blood is filtered, but then um, there's, you get this filtrate that's going to become urine that you pee out. <laughs> and, but stuff has to happen. It's not immediately ready to urinate as soon as the blood is filtered. So you've got this, this liquid that's been filtered from the blood, but it still needs to be modified. There's some materials that get absorbed back into the body. There's some materials that have to continue to be excreted more actively into the secreted or excreted into the, um, into the urine before it can leave the body. So uh, that happens in the tubules. So the, the, the blood is filtered and the filtrate is first formed in the glomeruli and then it passes to these tubules which further modify the urine. It's a windy day here. I don't know if you can hear if my microphone's picking that up, but the wind is high. All right, there are stratified cuboidal cells in the body, but they're very rare. Again, you can find them in glands and a couple of uh, transition zones between one epithelial tissue type and another. But they're rare, I'm not gonna cover them here. 
because I'm only covering the most common epithelial tissues here. So another uh, tissue type is going to be simple columnar. So columnar cells have pretty much the same job as the cuboidal cells. So secretion and absorption. A lot of times, cuboidal cells might secrete mucus in mucous membranes, or I'm sorry, columnar cells. So we find these, you know, a really good example of where you find these is in the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, and in the GI tract, they often have microvilli to amplify their role in absorption. So microvilli is like this wavy, we call it a brush border. It has enzymes embedded in it that help with absorption and with digestion as well. So it's just like this very wavy membrane. And what that waviness does is it increases the surface area to improve absorption because the gastrointestinal tract is about absorbing nutrients from your food. So that's a good place where you find it. Now, not all simple columnar cells have microvilli, but it's common. So I'm just going to draw them on there. Let's see. We are running out of space here. We'll see if I can fit the last two I want to cover. So pseudostratified, I already drew. Um, and then we have transitional. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this picture of pseudostratified. So to, I'll put this in a box up here. So, pseudo-stratified. So I'm not going to redraw that since it's right there already. These are just a strange, these are a very strange tissue type. So often these are for secretion and they can secrete mucus much like simple columnar because they are columnar cells. So I'm just going to write secretion, but they have this other role as well. So this is like I said, kind of a strange epithelial tissue type. So secretion. Um, I'll just, we'll do a, a colon here. So secretion is their role. Um, in, the, in the trachea, like in your respiratory tract, you find these and they also have a wavy end, but it's not microvilli, it's cilia. Pseudostratified, ciliated, epithelium is what we call them. The difference between microvilli and cilia is that cilia can move. They have microtubules, so it's, those are ele cytoskeletal elements that can sort of act like marionette strings to move them. So I'm going to say that's cilia. And this is microvilli. They look very similar, but they have different roles. All right, so the cilia that you find on some pseudostratified uh, epithelium, they move like fingers. So there's microtubules that can move them like marionette strings. And their job is to move mucus along. So in your, um, in, in your respiratory tract, they can move mucus up. <laughs> so you can cough it out, for example, or they can move it down. So, um, so we'll say uh, propulsion. Propulsion. So propulsion are the movement of substances with that cilia. And like I said, the, most of the respiratory tract has this, this type of epithelium. So they secrete mucus to keep the epithelium, the mucous membrane moist. And they also have the cilia for propulsion or the movement of that mucus so it can be moved around. All right, the last type is is not a combination of these shapes and these arrangements. We have something called transitional epithelia, and uh, I'm going to try to draw it in a small space here. So they're um, sort of like stratified cuboidal or columnar cells, uh, or some mix thereof, um, topped with 
these dome-like uh, cells that don't fit into any of the, these shapes. Uh, but when the membrane is stretched, those dome cells flatten. So like, you're gonna, I'll just tell you in advance that like, the place that you find this are gonna be membranes that need to stretch a lot, like the bladder. So the bladder goes from very small to very large. So it has this transitional epithelium. So when the bladder is not distended, if you were to look under a microscope at the cell types, you would see something that sort of looks like cuboidal or columnar cells. It just looks like a mess, honestly. It just looks like a total mess. But they are stratified, whatever they are stratified. They look rounder than cuboidal often, and they're all different shapes and sizes. Um, and then they're topped with these like balloon-like cells like this. They're really domed shaped. Now these all have nuclei. So these are like kind of stratified columnar or stratified cuboidal or some mix and then these like dome like um, cells. Now when this membrane, this membrane, this epithelial membrane is designed to stretch, so when your bladder for example gets really full and it's stretched out, these cells at the top that look like domes, they will flatten to become squamous. So they're sort of like stratified cuboidal or stratified columnar, topped with dome cells that when stretched become squamous cells, but then you know you urinate, your bladder bounces back to its original smaller shape, and these dome they, these uh, dome-like cells, you know, they were flattened down to squamous, now they come back up, pop back up again. So this is transitional epithelium. transitional epithelium and uh, stretchy stretchy tissues, <laughs> right? It is a rare tissue type, but it's very important where it exists. There are a couple other places where you can find it, but the most famous place that we talk about seeing this is in the bladder. These are the most important epithelial tissue types. You have simple squamous, stratified squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, pseudostratified columnar, and, uh, and yeah, and I should write that, pseudostratified columnar, and then transitional. So that's, what is that, six different epithelial tissue types that are commonly found in the body. So let's take a look at some microscopy images. And I just got these images by doing a simple Google image search for each epithelial cell type that I wanted. So if I want simple squamous, I just do a Google image search for simple squamous epithelium microscopy. So you just add microscopy to the end and it'll make sure it's bringing up microscope images instead of, you know, drawn diagrams. So here's a few images. All right, this one has a few on the same page. So over here, we have simple squamous epithelium on the top left. This is the alveoli of the lungs. So you can see right there, you know, that's all there is. It's a lot of empty space where the air comes in. Um, and then, you know, in certain images, you can see uh, bits of the capillaries that are picking up the, the oxygen and dropping off carbon dioxide. But most of this is really just this simple squamous epithelium with the alveoli that lines the alveoli. Super, super thin membrane. All right, over here you have simple cuboidal epithelium. This is part of the kidney. So you can see there's just, you know, these are tubules, kidney tubules, where the urine is being moved around. So this is a cross section just of, uh, you know, this is the part of, this is the kidney medulla. So it's not where the blood is filtered, it's where, you know, the filtrate has already come into the kidney and it's being modified by these cuboidal cells that line each tubule. So the um, these are cross sections of the tubule. So the, the urine filtrate would be going through the middle here in the white spots. That's the urine filtrate. And then those, that, that simple cuboidal epithelium is involved in um, modifying the, the content of the filtrate, bringing things back into the blood, excreting more things into the urine, things like that. All right, down on the bottom left, we have simple columnar epithelium. You can see how those cells are much taller than they are wide. And uh, these are goblet cells. Goblet cells create uh, mucus. So, so that's, uh, that's mucus that's being excreted into, this is going to be part of the intestinal tract. So these are part of some of your intestines, and there's all this mucus 
being created by goblet cells being spat into the intestines to help you know slicken up the stuff in there so that it more easily moves through uh, so that's those are the simple columnar epithelium and you can also see this brush border here so if you look real carefully there is this layer on the apical side of these epithelial cells um, that's the microvilli, and you know it's that's that's what it looks like in real life. If you if you zoomed in even further, you might see the waviness, like I showed in my crappy little um, hand drawn in it, version of it. But that's the brush border, and by that I mean it's microvilli and a bunch of enzymes. So again, that's to increase the surface area for absorption of nutrients. And then pseudostratified columnar. So you can see how that looks sort of like the columnar, but the nuclei are sort of all over the place. Some of the cells are really small, so they're all different sizes. So it gives it this false impression of, um, uh, of stratification. And then you can also see mucus being excreted here. So mucus, just like here, mucus. So, and then here's the cilia. It's longer than the microvilli. And those cilia are gonna move that mucus around. So to move it, you know, up or down out of the out of the um, the respiratory tract. So this is gonna be in the trachea. All right, let's see. We have more. We have, oh, yes, so this is in the kidney. This is the glomeruli that I was talking about in the lecture. So Glomeruli, that's an E there, okay. This whole thing is the glomeruli. And you can see this is this simple, so along this border around the outside, there's simple squamous epithelia. So again, I actually, for this image, I did a Google image search for glomeruli microscopy, okay. Then you get images like this. Um, and uh, here, this is likely to be uh, simple squamous as well, but from looking down bird's eye view, whereas these ones are from the side, so you can really see how thin they are. And then over here, you have these tubules, kidney tubules. And that's what we saw in the last image for simple cuboidal, right? So if I went back to here, we had these simple cuboidal epithelia, that's from the medulla. So up here where the glomeruli are, you also have tubules all around the glomeruli that have simple cuboidal cells. So there's the glomeruli here from the kidneys that filters the blood with its simple squamous epithelium. And then you have the simple cuboidal epithelium that lines the tubules, the kidney tubules. So the glomeruli filters the blood uh, into the tubules, and then the tubules modify it through secretion and absorption. Okay. All right, and then uh, we have a couple more to look at. So here uh, you have a, this is in the esophagus actually, not the skin. This is obviously stratified squamous. So you can see how these cells are all really thin and flat. It's a squamous layer, squamous epithelium. But there's more than one layer, obviously. Look at all these layers. It's not thin like the alveoli. It's a super thick layer. So this is in the esophagus. That's where your, your food gets swallowed down to. So again, there's a lot of sloughing off. So these cells have to be able to be rubbed off regularly and still replenish. So these cells at the bottom divide rapidly and um, push upwards. You know, the new cells get pushed upwards and squished as they get pushed. So that's the esophagus simple squamous, or not simple squamous, stratified squamous. Stratified, it's stratified because there's many layers. It's squamous because all the cells are flat. You're also gonna find, find stratified squamous epithelia for your skin as well. Uh, and one last is the transitional. This is the transitional epithelium. And that's that really weird one. Uh, remember, so it's transitional because there's a bunch of different cell types thrown in here. So it's kind of like cuboidal and columnar cells, sort of, and uh, topped by these dome-like cells up here. So 
this is the bladder that needs to stretch. This is the main place that you find the transitional epithelium. There are a couple other places, but it's mostly we really just think about the bladder. So again, this allows this, this organ, the bladder, to stretch. You can see how, you can imagine, you know, these, these cells are all scrunched up and balloon-like, and they could be flattened out so that the membrane could stretch as the bladder fills with urine. And then you void your bladder by urinating, by peeing, and then it contracts back up to these balloon-like cell shapes. So those are all the epithelium. The next video is going to be about connective tissue.